February 7th, 2017, as part of the Divine Worship Service. Department heads, you are encouraged to attend this recognition of your office. Details regarding the service will come to you in the form of a letter. On a somber note, Sister Udell Darvell's daughter, Cheryl, will be funeralized on Sunday, December 18th at Berean at 1 o'clock. We ask that you please stay close to Sister Darvell and her family as she mourns the loss of her daughter. The Festival of Praise with guest speaker Elder Ted Wilson, the President of the General Conference, will take place this evening starting at 4 p.m. at the Greater Travelers Baptist Church on Flat Shoals Road in Decatur. All are invited to attend. I want to give a reminder that the Children's Ministry will be hosting an ice cream social this evening at 6 o'clock for the children. So please bring the children this evening to enjoy the festivities. There will be communion and several baptisms next Sabbath on December 17th. We ask that the church please plan to attend. Also, there will be an Adventist Community Service special offering that will be collected next week's Sabbath. I have a few cards that I need to read that I actually, give me a moment because I left them sitting on there. Pardon me, the first card is from Sister Erin Wallace. And she says, hello, Shiloh family. I hope all is well. Just wanted to give you an update on life here in Palau. I love it here. We're about to start our sixth week of school and my experience with the students and my fellow student missionaries and community members has been great so far. I think I've finally gotten used to my new reality as a missionary in a foreign country and I'm excited to see how God will not only continue to work in my life but in the lives of the people here. Love you all, Aaron Wallace. I have another card from Brother Bernard Taylor. It says, thank you so much. When I asked God for help, I wasn't expecting such an awesome response. We wish to express our sincere appreciation for all your love and support during our time of loss. Thank you for your thoughts and your prayers from the Taylor family. I would now acknowledge today's and next week's birthday celebrants. Today, celebrating a birthday is Brother Den Dennis Baptiste, as well as Brother Denzel Harrison Sr. Tomorrow, December 11th, is Janae Archer's birthday. Monday, December 12th, Brother Melvin Reynolds will be turning 97 years old. Also on Monday, Michelle Francis also has a birthday. Happy birthday to Michelle. On December 14th, Brother Bradley Humphrey Strode will be celebrating his birthday. And on December 15th, Michael Williams. I'd like to leave you with a closing thought from Psalm chapter 127, verse 3, that children are a heritage from the Lord. Enjoy the rest of your Sabbath. Thank you very much. Good morning, Shiloh. Morning. Happy Sabbath and welcome. Um, my husband, Anthony Harris, is not here today, so I'm stepping in. My oldest daughter, Jessica, has a school choir bells function at Marietta Church, so he's with her. Today, we have a special program in store, but before we do that, I would like to welcome any visitors who may be uh, sharing their time with us this morning. If there's anyone here visiting for the first, second, third time, I would like to ask you to stand so that we can welcome you to Shiloh. I'd like for you to introduce yourself, tell us your name and who invited you. We'll have a mic coming to you shortly. Thank you. Good morning, church. My name is Diane Drake, and I'm from Baltimore, Maryland, and I'm here um, visiting this weekend with Mrs. Lola Lewis and Mrs. Diane Mitchell. Thank you, and welcome.
morning, church. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. I'm Sandra Oglesby, and this is my husband, Dr. Clarence Thomas III, and my grandson, Nolan Oglesby. And I'm here visiting my family here in Smyrna. Welcome to Shiloh. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. My name is Hyacinth Nugent. I'm visiting from Jamaica. This is my second time. I will be with you here, God's willing, for a little while. Welcome. Is there anyone else? Hello, I'm Laureen Joseph Joyce. I'm the sister of Brother Joseph, my sister-in-law of the male. Good morning, my name is Cynthia Joseph King, and Brother Joseph is my big brother, and I'm from Bethel Church in St. Croix, United States, Virgin Islands. Welcome, thank you. Good morning, church. I'm Lavina Joseph, and Brother Joseph, and Mrs. Grinnell Joseph, sister-in-law. We are here from Cleveland, Ohio, we left all that snow here and just came to your sunshine state. <laughs> Welcome. Hi, my name is Dr. Julie Hayek, and I'm from uh, Michigan, and it's good to be here. I'm visiting for now, and Teddy, and happy Sabbath. Happy Amen. Sabbath. Welcome. Okay, we'd like to thank you on behalf of Pastor Drake Barber the church officers, and all the members at Shiloh, I would like to welcome you to Shiloh today. And I'm going to ask that you open your hearts and your minds and receive the program that the children have prepared for you today. Last week when my husband spoke, he talked about God's superpower. And the children are following up with that. We're going to talk about God's superheroes. So please follow along and be blessed. Thank you. Good morning. I thought I saw a little British. Good morning. No, that didn't work. I'm sorry. How's everyone? Good, good, good. How many of you are warm inside here? I just want to make sure you're okay. That's, that's good. Uh, we look forward to this time every year to hang out with our kids and let them lead us in the worship. It's a fantastic experience. Those of you who are visiting with us, uh, we look forward to this. And can't you tell our kids are excited? Yes, they are. They, and the parents are excited, too, because practice is over. So they're excited as well. But let me say that uh, we have had a tremendous year thus far this year. And God has blessed us immensely. And uh, just think, almost 365 days, he, he's kept you alive. That's something worth shouting about, isn't it? All of the tragedies that take place and happen. So we're glad to see you. Glad to see you. How many are promising God by his grace that your year next year is going to be a whole lot better than this year? Uh, you're much wiser than you were last year. Quickly, next week is going to be a very busy, busy Sabbath. We're going to find every way we can to help people get salvation. We're going to have baptism. Amen. amen. Then we're going to have communion. Amen. Amen. So that's going to be fantastic. And then we're going to tell you about some of the other things that's going on also with our church and our planning. Um, as we prepare for the renovation project, I just want to put you on alert. I would like for you to pray and ask God what kind of sacrifice you can make for his house. Is that all right? Because we're going to be doing some renovations and hopefully that uh, we're going to give uh, some space to our young people and uh, our pantry and its, ex its growth. So we're looking forward to that, and I hope that you're plugged in. No one, no one can go without sacrificing. Isn't that right? We're all doing this together because we're family to make things happen at our church. 
So we're going to need you to be ready for that. But next week, we want to begin baptism at 1045. So parents, you've already been alerted to that. And so we need you to have your folks here. And there are those who have said something about baptism, but we haven't seen you. We need to see you today so that we make sure that we're right on target with you, with the rest of the folks. So if you're planning on being in this uh, service, then we need you to see Ella Wallace. If you just throw your hands in the air like you're saying hallelujah. Okay, there he is in the back. Need you to see him. And uh, make sure that we So we're doing that at 1045. So we'll have that baptism. On it. We're excited about it. About, I think he said about 13 people. Praise God. Now, also, I want to say this too. Now, shit, I can't wait for the kids to get up here. Um, this year, we're also going to be working on a church directory. Amen? Amen? So we can get to know who's peeping at each other. Not from the aisle, but we got to get to know each other. So uh, Nancy is going to be getting her team together. And uh, so that we can begin to work on our church directory. Now, I don't know about you, but I like knowing people in my church, don't you? I like at least knowing people. And I think that we're getting new influx of people that have, haven't been here before. And so we need to get to know each other so we can stay up with each other. Uh, that to me is important. I have a DVD that, by the grace of God, next week my family will be giving to you for a Christmas gift. I just left Oakwood at um, Pelk or Evangelism Council. There was a young lady there that preached a dynamic sermon, I want you to have free of charge. Is that all right? It doesn't cost you a dime. I just need you to play it and share it with your friends. But now we're getting dynamic women preachers. You may not like it, but it's here. And the Lord's going to, and he used that sister last week. And if all of us preachers could be baptized, we should have been. <laughs> but that sister was dynamic. So we're going to give, hopefully, uh, our uh, media team will have that uh, ready for us. I'll get that to them as soon as possible, and we'll do that. Well, next week, we'll also announce the deacons and deaconess. We didn't want to take any time this week to do that, but we'll do that on next week and so that you can see who's, who's who. All right? Let's make sure that we have a dynamic day of worship. I'm looking forward to that. And welcome those who are visiting with us. God bless. Amen. chance to greet each other. You know, I knew, I was just wondering why you all were looking so stunned, so shocked, so, so whatever. How about let's greet each other in our own Shiloh way? Uh, we want to make sure that everyone feels welcome at our church, and we don't want to cut that short now. So let's all greet each other in our own Shiloh way, shall we? And uh, say welcome to those who are visiting with us. All right.
All right, thank you, everyone. I hope you all feel welcomed and all warm, even though it's cold outside. Yeah, Did we get warmed up. All right, well, I'm happy to see you because today is a very special day. Today is a Children's Day program, and we have a special program planned for you. We have been rehearsing for weeks, and the children have been learning parts and songs, and we have a great program in store for you guys. And we hope that you are blessed by this program. At this time, I am going to pray to invite God's presence to be with us, and we'll go straight into our program. Is that all right? All right. Let's bow our heads. Dear Father, gracious, wonderful, omnipotent, God, you are all. Be with us. Be with our humble worship. Be with these children, help them to be a blessing and bring a message to the congregation today. Be with everyone that is here. Help us to worship you, dear Father. Help us to have a heart that is willing to receive all the blessings that you have in store for us. Forgive us for all our many sins, Lord. But most of all, help us to be forgiven towards others. Help us to show others the kind of love that you show towards us. And when you come, dear Father, help us all to go home with you. This is my humble prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Zuri. Yeah. Remember when I told you there's a comic convention today? Yeah, I remember. It's supposed to be right down the street, and I hear that all the superheroes are going to be there. Like Superman? Yeah, like Superman. I think they should be right here. Where are they? You know, I've always wanted to be a superhero. Never know what it takes. Uh, I mean, I didn't always want to be a superhero. There's so much responsibility. I just want to have fun, you know? Well, here they come. Hi, I'm Superman. Truth, justice, and the American way is what I believe in. I was born on the alien planet Krypton, and I have superhuman abilities that benefit humanity. I just joined the Justice League, and I work with Batman and Wonder Woman. Hi, I am Wonder Woman, also known as Diana Prince, Amazon Princess. Did you know I'm called the goddess of truth? I can fly and my bracelets protect me. I'm Batman, also known as the Dark Knight. I am the defender and protector of Gotham City. It's your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. I was bitten by a radioactive spider and became super strong. I can stick to walls, ceilings, and buildings. With great power comes great responsibility. Wow, look at Catwoman. That's a real villain right there. Well, look at my outfit. I take whatever I want. I'm strong-willed, and I don't need anyone. Wow. You guys are really inspirational. Yeah. You know, I have an idea. We should go change. Cool. Let's go.
They said I couldn't be a hero, but they I told them no. <laughs> Brightest day. Darkest oh. night. We are the super. Ow. This this mask is really itchy. Sorry. Um, brightest day. Darkest night. We're superheroes. Are you supposed to be superheroes? Of course. Yeah. We have capes. Well, um, nice cape. Thank you. But you've got it all wrong. It doesn't take a cape and a mask to be a superhero. What do you mean? What do you mean? No. What you need to do is pray and ask God to give you hope, courage, strength, and heart to be a superhero. I didn't think it'd take all those things. I don't think I really need all that stuff. Well, I was going to just read the Bible to you and just talk, but I see that we need more. So I'm going to walk you through a couple of scenarios to show you what God's superheroes do and what they need. Sounds good to me. All right. So this first scenario is about a group of boys who are coming out of the grocery store and on their way to a basketball game. God has superheroes everywhere, and superheroes need heart. Hmm. Hey, how was your summer? I had a boring summer, but I hate the thought of having to go back to school. Me too. Let's go. The game at the community center starts in 15 minutes. Hi, let me hold the door for you. Thanks for holding the door for me. No problem, ma'am. Come on, let's go. The game at the community center starts in 15 minutes. No, you go ahead. I'll catch up with you later. If you don't play now, you won't be able to play until next week. Let's go. Well, that's your loss. Nice work, Jamal, abandoning your friends. You know we can't play basketball without the point guard.
wow, it took a lot of heart to do what she did. Yes, it did. Blessed are the pure of heart, for they shall see God. Matthew 5, 8. How about you? Would you have done that? I mean, I just want to have fun, like I said. I don't need, I don't need courage and all of that. So. You do need courage to be a God super, superhero for God. That's what our next scene is all about. Several years ago, police locked a Christian up in prison in a country where Christians were persecuted. The prison officials asked the Christian to sign a statement. If the Christian signed the statement, other Christians would be arrested. Come forward and do offertory.
days of your fathers, ye are gone away from mine ordinance, and have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. But ye said, Wherein shall we return? Will a man rob God, yet ye have robbed me? But ye said, Wherein have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. Ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all tithes into the storehouse, and there may be meat in my house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall no that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful day you gave us. Bless the money that was received here today. But more importantly, bless every soul in the sanctuary as a greater gift done to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now, here's our scene. Several years ago, police locked up a Christian in a country where Christians were persecuted. The prison officials asked a Christian to sign a statement accusing other Christians of breaking the law, and if this Christian signs the statement, those Christians would be arrested. Oh, wow. Prison. This is where the real bad guys are. It's not really what you think it is. Sign this statement. Things will go easier for you if you do what I say. The chains keep me from signing this. What chains? You have no chains. I am bound by the chains of witnesses who gave their life for Jesus throughout the centuries. I am a link in this chain. I will not break it. Polycarp. I was put in jail because I was a servant of the Lord, but through him I am free. I am Waycliffe. I believe that the Bible should be translated into the common tongue of other people. After my death, my body was burned along with my writings. I am Jim Elliott. I was an evangelical Christian who shared the gospel. I was devoted to helping others know who the Lord is. I am Paul. I sacrifice myself for Christ, yet I live. Not I, but Jesus lives within me. I'm John Huss, and I sacrifice my life for Jesus, my Lord and Savior. I am Stephen, and the first Christian martyr, and I left you an example of a godly, courageous witness. I am Aaron. I am Anya. I am Thaisa. 
I am Tora. I am Aslan. I am Ava. And I will not break this chain. Wow, I don't know if I'd have the courage to do that. It takes a lot of courage to be a superhero for God. You guys really want courage? Well, you can have fun like me. It's not all about being fun and having fun. It's about doing what God wants us to do and saving other people. We should all be a link in God's chain. I think real heroes do that, don't you think? Yes. I guess. Mandy and her family recently relocated to Smyrna, Georgia from Phoenix, Arizona. Today is Mandy's first day of school. She feels scared and nervous. Her parents walk her to the classroom, her new teacher. Mandy and her family recently relocated to Smyrna, Georgia from Phoenix, Arizona. Today is Mandy's first day of school and she feels scared and nervous. Her parents walk her to the classroom. Her new teacher, Mrs. Brown, greets them. Introductions are made. Her parents say goodbye and leave. Mandy's teacher walks her into the room and introduces her to the students who are already there working on the activity. Mrs. Brown seats Mandy at a table where there's only one seat left. Mandy sits down and the teacher explains the activity. Mandy begins working on the activity and the students happily work and talk to each other. After a while, Mrs. Brown brings over another student and, in and introduces her to the students at the table. She seats the student at the other table, explains the activity, asks if she has any questions, and walks away. The student sits at the table staring into space. Mandy notices that the new student is not very happy. Before long, the student begins to cry. Mandy leaves her seat and sits next to, to the new student. Hi, Chantal. Why are you crying? I just moved here from Alabama. I miss my friends and family terribly. I don't like this school. I want to go back to my old home with my old friends. Well, if you stop crying, then I'll tell you something. I just moved here from Arizona. I left my friends and family there. I miss them very terribly. But now that I know that I'm not the only one who's new to this school and feels the way that I do, I feel better.
Really? You know exactly how I feel. I know exactly how you feel. Hey, let's be friends. Let's be friends. Mandy and Chantel have become best friends. They spend a lot of time together and talk to each other on the phone every day. One day, Mandy notices that Chantel is avoiding her. Chantel does not sit with Mandy at lunch as she usually does, nor does she speak to her at recess. Mandy wonders why Chantel is treating her this way and tries to talk to her. But Chantel just walks away. Mandy's feelings are hurt when she sits on a picnic bench. She gets up, picks up a stick, and begins to draw in the dirt. The teacher notices her sitting by herself and sits down beside her. Mandy, why are you sitting here all by yourself? Usually you and Chantel are inseparable. You guys are the dynamic duo. Chantel has been avoiding me. Every time I try to talk to her, she just walks away. I don't know why she's treating me this way. Would you like me to call Chantel over so you two can talk? Hopefully we can get to the bottom of this. Chantel, come over here, please. Mandy tells me you've been avoiding her, and every time she tries to talk to you, you walk away. Is that true? Yes, Miss Brown, it's true. But why? I thought Mandy was your best friend. She was, but she doesn't want to be my friend anymore. When we were in, were in science class and working on our projects, I asked her if she wants to work on the science project in the water cycle with me. But she wants to work on the states of matter with Jennifer. Ever since then, she's been spending all her free time with Jennifer. Jennifer is her new best friend. That's not true, Chantel. Just because I didn't want to work on the water cycle project with you doesn't mean I'm not your best friend anymore. I just wanted to work on states of matter instead. Chantel, it's natural for friends to be interested in different things and still remain friends. It's also natural for friends to have other friends. Just because Chantel, just because Chantel didn't want to work with you on the water cycle project doesn't mean she's not your friend. Friends need room to exercise their interests and talents. God made you that way. Just because she didn't want to work with you on that project doesn't mean she's not your friend. I'm sorry. I feel so terrible. Shan Mandy, can you please forgive me? I forgive you, Chantel. And when these projects are done, we can spend more time together. I want a heart that forgives, a heart full of love, one with compassion just like yours above, one that overcomes evil, goodness and love, like it never happened, never holding a grudge, one a heart that forgives, lives and less lives, one that Keeps loving over and over again One that man can offend Because your word is within One that loves without price Like it, Lord Jesus Christ One a heart that loves everybody Even my enemies One a love like you be Like you just like you Want a heart that forgives <clears throat> Want 
One heart that forgives When the pain is so deep It's so hard to speak About it to anyone Just like your son I give all my right To hold it against them With hatred inside When a heart that forgives When the pain is so deep It's so hard to speak About it to anyone Just like your son I give all my right To hold it against them With hatred inside When a heart loves everybody Even my enemy Wanna love like you, be like you, just like you did Wanna love like you, talk like you, just like you did Wanna be like you, live like you, just like you did mm -hmm. Cause a heart that forgives is a heart that will live Totally free from the pain of the past And the heart that lets go is all that will know So much freedom Lord, I want to let it go Hey, hallelujah Lord, I need to let it go Oh, Lord, it's been
These females, dude, they're always fighting and bickering for no reason. For no reason. Like, why? Why the argument? Why the argument? Enough. That's not okay, true. Okay, okay, I understand that Mandy and Chantel yeah. had a disagreement. I understand that it takes mercy, it takes a lot of forgiveness to do this, but really? Yes, and in the Bible it says, blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Matthew 5, 7. I don't know. If that was me, I would, I would have skipped the argument and just started fighting. Pretty much. Don't you know that part in the Lord's Prayer that goes, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us? No, not really. Know. Well, maybe we should have been reading the Bible instead. This next scenario is about hope, and we as Christians really need to... We as Christians really need to hold on to hope and have faith these days. One Tuesday afternoon in March, the Shiloh Food Pantry was getting ready for opening. The pantry helpers were busy organizing the food, getting ready for the guests to come. Oh look, here comes a guest right now, driving up. Oh, Chloe, how is that sister of yours? Good. How was your week, Chloe? Good. The pantry helpers greeted the guest and gave her a ticket and put her to sit down while we waited for the other guests to arrive. Oh, look, here comes some more pantry guests right now. Hello, guest. Hello, guest. So the pantry helpers helped the guests find their seats while they waited for Brother Clark to come for Bible study. Then they took them one by one, calling their numbers to show them all that the pantry had available. Then suddenly, Jordana noticed Nigel all by herself, looking a bit sad. Gray skies are gonna clear up, put on a happy face. Why are you in such a sad mood all the time? I have every reason to be sad. My job only gives me part-time hours, and my bills are more than what I make. I have a family to take care of, you know. Don't you worry about anything? Of course I do, sometimes. And why are you always so cheerful? What's your secret? I just look to God and let him know what bothers me. You can do the same thing. Just tell God about your hopes, fears, and dreams, and trust that he will work things out. 
Let's read the Bible and see what it says. 1 Peter 1, verses 3 to 6 says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God has great mercy, and because of his mercy, he gave us a new life. He gave us a living hope because Jesus Christ rose from death. Now we hope for the blessings God has for his children. These blessings are kept for you in heaven. They cannot be destroyed or spoiled or lose their beauty. God's power protects you through your faith, and it keeps you safe until your salvation comes. That salvation is ready to be given to you at the end of time. This makes you very happy. But now, for a short time, different kinds of troubles may make you sad. This verse teaches that our salvation gives us great hope. What is that hope? We have two types of hope. In this life, God will help us with our struggles. And when he comes back again, you will go to heaven and be with him. Nigel, this hope is too good to keep to ourselves. I feel so much better now that I have spoken to a friend. Now it's time to talk to God. So let's pray. Dear Jesus, Amen. <laughs> I'm going to tell others about this hope. Spread sunshine all over the place and put on a happy face. be on. The music is going to be on. That was cool. Um, you know. But that last scene, I think heroes really need to learn how to give hope. And if 
we understand that hope is a very delicate thing, it will understand that we need to give it more. And I don't see, I don't see villains giving hope. Really, Zuri. Yeah, I'm starting to realize how important it is to give hope to the world, give confidence. Prayer is a very powerful thing, too. We need to pray and ask God to give us hope because we don't have it on our own. So, Our next scenario is about how God's superheroes have power, and they need power. Guys, we have a mission. Let's ho let's look to see what our mission is. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to go make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach them to follow everything Jesus taught you. To help you on this mission, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. Remember, with God, all things are possible. This tape will self-destruct in three seconds. <laughs> That makes it sound exciting. But that seems hard. How are we going to get to that? Let's look in the Bible to find some instruction. Go to all the world and preach the good news to all creation. What is the good news? The good news. <laughs> the good news is the plan of salvation through Christ. <laughs> the ultimate superhero is Jesus. He came to earth and died on the cross for our sins and was resurrected and now sits on the throne and wants to save everyone. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. We have to tell everyone that's our mission. Go to the Bible so you have about having cords because I'm going to need them. The Bible says in Joshua 1 verse 9, I have commanded you, have a die. Be strong and courageous. Don't be fearful or discouraged because the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Romans 1 verse 15, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. And in Mark 10 verse 27, Jesus looked at the man and said, with man this is impossible, but not with God. All things are possible with God. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Philippians 4 13. The most important message is to tell everyone that God loves us and we should love them the way that he loves us. Come on, guys, let's all pray together. Bow your heads and close your eyes. Dear God, please help us to fulfill our missions. Please help us to have our wonderful day. Please guide us from harm and danger. Please protect us and help us to love others in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen.
already know. They have to know. Hmm. They have to do a that was a lot of it. information to take in. A lot of information. Don't you think it's important that we should have heart, encourage, mercy, all these things? It's making me realize what a real hero is. You know? Yes. I don't need this anymore. Oh, right, right. Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. <laughs> now you understand what a superhero for God is. You have to have heart, hope, courage. No cape is required. All we need to do is pray and ask God to give us all of those things, and then we can be superhero for him.
hope you enjoy that. I sure did. The kids did a wonderful job. I'll just give them a minute, let it get settled. Okay. This year's children's ministry theme is Leaders for Christ. Children 11 and up were challenged to take over children's church and teach the lessons to children three to seven years old. I'm a believer that one way to master a skill is by teaching others. They did it willingly and they did a great job. If you mentored a younger child this year during children's church, please stand. These are your kids. You can sit. Each of these children were assigned an adult member of the team to help them along with the lesson. All of this could not have been done without the awesome children's ministry team. If you were on a part of the team, please join me on the stage. Yes, you. Don't hide, Celine, you too. Come on, yes, you help. Come on. I want to personally thank you for donating your time and talents to God's work. I know it is a sacrifice, but I appreciate your commitment. And this is just a small token to remind you that what you do doesn't go unnoticed. This is my helper. Isn't he handsome? <laughs> really? <laughs> All right. This ministry has been truly a blessing to me. And at this time, I would like to pa pass on this blessing to you, Lucy. Where are you, Lucy? Come over here, Lucy. Okay. I want to give this baton to you to remind you that we are in this together, which is to save these precious souls. And I hope that this, this ministry is as much blessing as it was to me, and it will be to you. All right. Amen. All right, you guys can sit. Okay. I also wanted to share that we had seven children accept Christ as their personal savior through baptism this year. If you got baptized or getting baptized this year, please stand. Amen. All right. So I am going to do the closing remarks. Well, more like a charge, or I did not call it sermon it because I don't know if I'm qualified, but I do believe that I have something to say, and um, I'm going to do it. I'm going to say it. So, as I share with you this morning, I'm going to whisper a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, be with this message. Help it to be a blessing. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. And, well, this screen is not working, but the TVs here are working, so you can follow along on the PowerPoint. Okay, so today we've been talking about God's superheroes, right? And you saw the children demonstrated an awesome illustration of what a God superhero is. And I have summarized this in three basic points. Number one. God's superhero overcomes human sinful nature. Number two, God's superhero replaces selfishness and pride with humility and love. Point number three, share God's, a God's superhero share God's love and hope to everyone. Next slide. God's superhero overcomes human sinful nature. And I have a 
verse to share with you, and that's Romans 6.6. 6. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. So, what does that mean? That means that we can overcome sin, right? And I know sometimes, you know, we go through life and we have temptations and when we fall, we're like, oh, we're only humans, right? That's what the world say, oh, we're only humans. But God calls us to be more than humans. He wants us to be superhuman, right? We're called to be different. We're called to overcome our sinful nature. Is it possible? Yes, it is. Is it going to come overnight? I don't know, maybe for some people. But what I have noticed by observation and Bible stories that it takes time, but the number one thing is that it takes willingness. You have to decide, and you have to commit. It cannot be based on your emotions or how you feel the day, how you feel that day, but it's a principle that you decide that this is who I'm going to this is who I'm going to follow and this is what I'm going to do. We have a lot of examples in the Bible that have showed us this. Right? We have Joseph, we have Daniel, we have the three Hebrew boys. And this is what they said. I'd rather die than to sin against my God. How many of us are willing to do that? It takes practice, right? It takes a lot of prayer. And it takes a lot of studying the Bible. But the number one thing it takes is decision. You have to be intentional about what you do every day to overcome sin. So it is not good enough to say, oh, I'm only human. Because God has given us the provision to overcome sin. Thank you. So the next um, point I have is God's superhero replaces selfishness and pride with humility and love. And I have two Bible verses to share with you. Ephesians 4 verse 2. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Do not, uh, Philippians 2 verse 3. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourself. So, you see, when we love people, we can't have expectations. Because it's possible you won't get it back. And this is what I, what I think. Okay. So we're all born with a cup, right? And we go through life, and this cup gets, full, gets, gets filled with love from our parents, from our family members, from our teachers. But there are some people that have the same cup, but it never got full, right? So some of us, it'd be so full that we can't help but to give. There are some that have none to give. So you might give love on someone and you're expecting it in return, but they might not have it to give. But it's up to us to fill that cup so that at some point they have so much love that they can't help it but to give. So when we see people, we can't make assumptions because we don't know what their life is. We don't know what people are going through. They might give you a harsh word, but you don't know where the harsh word is coming from. Yeah, in this life, there are evil people, but there's also a lot of people that are hurting. A lot of people that are hurting. And we need to be their superheroes. Next point. Okay. God's superheroes share God's love and hope to the world, to the whole world. 
1 John 4, 9, 11. In this, the love of God was made manifest among us, that God has sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we might have, oh, I'm sorry, that we might have love, but that God, he loved us and sent, he sent his son, oh, the PowerPoint left me. <laughs> All right, beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Okay. For this point, I decided to share my own personal story. I hope that's okay with you. I can stand here today to speak to you because of God's superheroes. Those that reveal God to me through their love and their mercy towards me and these children at Shiloh that God put into my life to find my purpose and my full potential. See church, once I was dying, but now I live because of the hope of Jesus Christ. It sounds like a cliche, but it's true. I debated if sharing my story with you today would be the appropriate thing to do, but I kept hearing a small voice that said, I gave you a voice. You have to use it. And I pray that someone would find hope in my story. At the age of five, I witnessed my mother leave this world. At that moment, my eyes were no longer innocent to what sin can do to humans. My heart was broken, my dreams were shattered, shattered and my hope in humanity was completely distorted. I watched the whole thing played out over and over again. And I thought, if I say something to the perpetrator, then she would be alive today. I heard the fight, I saw the commotion, and I did nothing. I just stood there, and with one blow, she was gone. What does a five-year-old know about human capacity to destroy each other? Nothing. I lived in a world of confusion, and I asked God, why me? God does not love me because he left me here to die alone with my guilt. I'm sure as a child I could not articulate that, but I felt it in my loneliness. Yet he gave me the ability to forgive the person who took my mother away from me. Never underestimate the sophistication of a child's feelings. See, I often hear the, the saying, children are seen and not heard. Well, don't underestimate that children need to be seen and need to be heard. My insides would scream and no one would hear me. And I believe God did not love me because he couldn't hear me. You have to be these children's superheroes because he has sent you with a message of love and hope to those that have felt unheard, abandoned, and unworthy of anybody's love. Don't undervalue the scars of children's unworthiness because they will take it for the, to the rest of their lives. Okay, until they are adults. Yes, um, years went by and after many stepmothers, I still had a void and I lived hoping to be noticed. And when I turned 15, the pain was no longer bearable and I decided to say goodbye to this world. I wrote a goodbye letter. I took a whole bunch of pills, but I never died that night. That morning, I did not know or what. I did not know how or what happened. But today I know, 
And I can tell you, it was mercy. Though I felt no hope, God did not give up on me. I never felt worthy of anything good, so I never expected it or seek after it, or, and frankly, I did not think I had many choices. But Jesus chose me a long time ago. I just didn't know it. I ended up in Mandeville, Jamaica, in a school on the hill filled with God's superheroes. Though I did have a wounded soul, I met superheroes that showed me God's love. I met my best friend on that school on the hill that spent 20 years praying for me when I didn't have the strength, the knowledge, the ability to pray for myself. Every mistake I made, every wrong choice that I went, she never judged me. She just prayed and kept praying. Don't underestimate the superpower of your prayers to pray for others that can't pray for themselves. When I left the school on the hill, I was left alone to fend for myself in a world that does not want you or me to live in peace. I moved to the United States. My wounds that never healed, they continued haunting me. My lonely childhood continued to follow me, and I looked in all places, things, and people to fill a void that only God's love could fill. <clears throat> you see, I never thought I was worthy of God's love, and when my already frail heart could not take it anymore, I tried once more to leave this cruel world with my painful memories and my heart filled of holes of disappointment in humanity. But God, God never left me. That night, with tears in my eyes, I said to myself, I can't take these pills. I still have a little bit of hope. Surely I broke down on my kitchen floor and I prayed to God, and I was being real. I poured out my heart and pleaded for forgiveness for all the sins, and I named them one by one. I felt like I prayed for hours. And I tell you, I felt like the angels picked me up off the floor and eleve me, elevated me to places I never knew were possible for me to achieve. He forgave me and placed me in front of you to let you know that God loves you and he loves all his children. These children are my superheroes because they healed my wounds for once and for all. When I first came here, I couldn't even look into the eyes of a five-year-old because it would take me back to that night and I would literally cry in the ladies' bathroom. But the devil is a liar. For God used these wounds to do his work and love these children. I found purpose and he used all my creative abilities to do his work. I learned about love, compassion, patience, and faith. And he revealed himself to me time and time again by working things out for his glory. And I have another superhero in this congregation. And that is Sister Cross. Who believed that I could do this work when I had no idea what I was getting myself into. And she saw me when I was trying to hide in the crowd. She said to me, I will adopt you. You can be my daughter. She never knew my story. She didn't even know who I was. I was just some quiet girl sitting in the back in Sabbath school. Nobody has ever said that to me since I was five years old. And last but not least, my family my husband, and my children. He's one of, of those superheroes that I met on that school on the hill. 
I have peace now so that I can do God's work. He saw in me, that's Erwin, what I couldn't see in myself. And his family became my family. And his friends became my friends. And his church became my church. And life is good. So you see, church, my story is a victory story. And it's also twofold. This is for the hopeless and the hopeful. If you are hopeless today, just believe that God wants nothing but the best for you. And if you are hopeful, you have to share it with those that have no hope. So I charge you today to see someone that may be dying on the inside. I charge you to be a God superhero, to bring a message of love and hope. A God of love that has sent his only begotten son to die for us that we may have eternal life. Everyone has a story. You don't have to know their story. Just know that we need each other. And God has given you a mission to share his love and hope with others. All you have to do is close your eyes and whisper a prayer that God may use your life to bring a blessing to someone that needs to hear his voice and don't know that they can hear it for themselves. Share love with a smile, a hug, a kind word, and forgive others. Have mercy on others so that they can see God in you. Let this be your mission. Don't underestimate your superhero power because you never know you might be saving someone's lives today. So you see, my story is a sad story, but it's a victory story because I too am a God superhero. Right, so I can wear the God superhero t-shirt too. So, to lift the mood a little, I have a video prepared for you guys of what the children did this year. And that the big screen is not working, but you could see it on the video screens.
which is provided and we're going to serve the children first so when we do the benediction the children will be ushered out first into the gym and then um, and then the rest of us can join let's pray for this okay and now i am going to bless the meal for the rest of the day okay let's um, bow our heads dear heavenly father thank you for this beautiful sabbath day thank you for your blessing thank you for the sunshine thank you for these children thank you for everything dear father bless the food that we're about to eat help it to do our bodies good bless the hands that prepared it and help us to enjoy the rest of this sabbath day in jesus name i pray your eyes. Dear Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you for everyone being here to watch these kids do this Christmas play. Thank you for letting everything go well. And as we as we go into the gym to fellowship, to, so, to be with one another, we ask you to be with us. And as we go home, we ask you to give us traveling mercies. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.